I'm Ken and you're watching Kelt Can Cook. The Scotch cooking channel that encourages young women to have the confidence and competence they need to cook in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, I love American cookies. Not too keen on British biscuit. I don't, I don't like shortbread. It's, um, it's crumbly and it's dry and it's pretty bland. But American cookies, oh, they're amazing. You get these, these moist, delicate, tender, soft, mounds of goodness that are stuffed chock full of chocolate chips and nuts and if you're an absolute psychopath raisins i'm a sociopath not a psychopath so i will never have raisin cookies on my show i promise you that what i will be offering you is today's recipe red velvet cookies oh they're so delicious and moist because i put cottage not cottage cheese i put cream cheese in the batter oh it's so good Anyway, I love it, you're gonna love it, let's be about to shout, oh wait, lest I forget, if you click right here, you should, here, 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 there, roughly here, you should see a link to The Raven, a super spooky reading I did for Halloween. It's really good, it's one of my favourite uh, voiceover bits I've done thus far, I uh, put a lot of effort into it. Had some friends help me with it. My friend Luke Strecker, he did an absolute fantastic job with the score. My friend Brandon Boomer did a great job with the editing. So if you've not watched it, click the link right here somewhere and hopefully it'll take you right to it. Anyway, back to the show. All right, got a sand pie preheat in our oven, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't know what that is in Celsius, I don't care. Now, we're gonna take two and two thirds cup of flour, all purpose, general, bland, boring flour. None of that whole wheat garbage and we're gonna dump that into a bowl where we're gonna put all of our dry ingredients, right? Good, just like so. Next, we're going to take a half cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. I'm using Hershey's cocoa. You can use whatever you like. I've got lots of varieties. We're gonna put a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of kosher salt, and then we're just gonna take a whisk and just kind of blend that all together, just like so. When it comes to our wet and our dry ingredients, we want to mix them together separately and uh, then incorporate the dry into the wet. Now for our wet ingredients. We are going to put one and a half sticks of room temperature butter and we are going to put a four ounce block of cream cheese, a cup of white sugar and a cup of brown sugar into the same bowl and then add about two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Now, when I say room temperature butter, I mean let it sit outside on your counter for an hour or so. Uh, you want it to be nice and tender and uh, not quite melty yet. We're going to take an egg and then we're just going to kind of blend all that together. Uh, as you can see, my stand mixer does not mix on its own or does not turn on its own. I have to manually do that. That's because, uh, well, I'm cheap. Here we are, just like so. You don't want to over mix this, just mix it enough so the ingredients incorporate. We're then going to take a single egg and we're going to finagle the white out of the egg yolk and put the egg yolk into our mixture. Blend that up just nicely so. All right, very nice. As you can see, the egg yolk incorporates throughout the whole mixture and it adds a nice creaminess to our uh, to our batter. I'm here adding a lot more <laughs> red, vel red uh, food color than I need to. Two tablespoons, that's really all you need. Maybe one and a half, but three, just too much. As you can tell, it's a garish red color. But uh, it's perfect for Christmas if it's that time of year. We're now going to add our dry ingredients into our wet. Do it nice and slowly while it's blending. I'm just kind of dumping it all in at once because it's really hard to film these things together. Uh, but try to do it a wee bit at a time so that it blends uh, more smoothly into it. Then we're going to add a cup and a half of white chocolate chips. None of that semi-sweet or dark chocolate stuff. That's going to taste awful with these cookies. Trust me on that. I've experimented. It's not good. We're then going to take a spatula and really get in there to get all the ooey gooey goodness off of our beaters, just like so. And then we're going to want to take a baking sheet, also as a cookie sheet, I suppose, uh, and we're going to take some parchment paper, lay it on the top of it, and we're going to make balls out of our, out of our mix, but you want to get your hands nice and wet because all that food coloring is exceedingly sticky, all right? So, uh, also the egg yolk is very sticky too. So. Uh, every three balls, I figure, they're about an inch, about, an inch, about, about three centimeters, inch, whatever. Uh, you're going to want to go wash your hands, get some of that uh, stickiness off of you. If you're just making the cookies for yourself, you can always just... 
But, uh, you know, if you make it this for your friends, that's disgusting. Now, we're going to take our balls and put them into a freezer for about 30 minutes. Well, a minimum of 30 minutes. You can less than, let, let them rest as long as you want. Then after they've rested for about 30 minutes or longer, we're going to pop them into our oven. And anywhere between 14 minutes and 16 minutes cooking time is about right. This particular batch I cooked for 14 minutes, as you can tell here. And then when they come out, they are exquisitely delicious. Now, while they are still warm, I want you to take uh, just however many remainder you got of your white chocolate chips and just put them into the cookies. This adds a presentary effect and it looks very neat and trim. Just like so. You can do a lot. I'm just doing one per each. Just like so. And that's red velvet cookies. They're an absolutely fantastic dish. I love them. All my friends have said, Ken, this is some of the best cookies we've ever eaten. And they're right. They are some of the best cookies I've eaten too. But there's one person I know whose cookies are better than my own. Her name is Melanie. She stands about almost five feet tall. And her chocolate chip cookies are fantastic. I'm trying to get her to come on the show so she can show us what she does. Maybe she will at some point. Maybe peer pressure will get her to do it. Who knows? Until then, you're watching Celt Can Kick, the Scottish cooking channel that encourages young men and women to have confidence and competence they need to conquer the kitchen. <laughs> oh, and I'll be seeing you.